Larry Levine, author of Selling from the Heart. And today, Larry and I are going to talk about just a couple of key parts of his book that are super important for all salespeople. But if you're a new sales rep just getting into the sales game, this is one of the guys that you absolutely want to connect with on LinkedIn, that you want to follow on LinkedIn. And I recommend that you get the book, Selling from the Heart. Larry, welcome. Great to talk Thanks. to you. Thanks. No, no, I, I appreciate it. I, I, guess, I guess the uh, $100 I slipped you worked, huh? Oh, did you? I never got that yet. Anyway. <laughs> Oh, so basically I'm doing this for nothing, eh, Larry? Okay, great. So, all right, Larry, um, first uh -oh. of all, thank you so much for taking time out today because we're, just so everyone knows, we're recording this on a Sunday morning. Larry didn't have to get on here on a Sunday morning with me, but I really appreciate that he took the time to do that. So, Larry, let's just start with a, with a real quick question, a simple question. What inspired you to write the book Selling from the Heart? Like, where does that, that title come from? What got you motivated to do that? Uh, wow. Uh, I'll, I'll keep this one short, but I'll pack it full of uh, a condensed story. But, uh, you know, I always wanted to write a book and, and I'd made a promise and it was to myself and to my wife that I said, you know, by the time I was 50, I'd write a book. Well, it didn't quite work out that way. It was a couple of years later that it actually happened. But um, it, actually, the person who really inspired me to write it was my podcast partner, Daryl. And, uh, you know, originally selling from the heart came from us starting a podcast. So it was probably, this is rewind. This is probably about two years ago. Okay. And we were both in Las Vegas. I was getting ready to speak at a office technology conference in the, in the channel that I'd grown up in. And we we're just having a cup of coffee one day. And I said, Hey, you know what? Why don't we start podcasting? Right. I mean, we're, we're both writing articles and things like that. I said, Hey, why don't we just start podcasting? Mm-hmm. And it'll help get, you know, our brand out there. It'll help, to, you know, we'll just start driving conversation, right? And he goes, Daryl goes, you got to be kidding me, right? Start a podcast, you, right? I mean, what are we going to talk about? I said, well, we got a lot of things in our head. I mean, let's just start talking about it, have a conversation, see what happens from there. And he goes, okay, he goes, what do you want to call the podcast? And I go, selling from the heart. And that's how, and it just stuck. And he goes, he looks at me, he goes, freaking awesome. And yeah. he goes, but it's so Daryl goes, well, why'd you say sell from an I go, that's just, that, that's just me. And that's what I brought to my clients. Okay. And there you go. And so that's a, and we just started podcasting around it and just being, it's just who I, it's just who I was. It's who Daryl is, is we're just two just down to earth guys that really love selling. And we just want everyone to understand that you can be true. And you can be the real versions of yourself because that's what the sales world's really lacking. So that's kind of, I mean, it was just something that just happened. And then it was probably uh, August, 2017. And Daryl and I were going to get together and do just a little bit of strategic planning and all that. So I live in, I live in just North of Los Angeles and Daryl lives in uh, just outside of Little Rock, Arkansas. So I was going to fly from, LA to Little Rock and we were going to do some planning for a few days mm -hmm. and I get to I had a layover in Houston so I get to Houston and I turn my phone out of uh, airplane mode and there's Daryl leaves me a message he goes hey change of plans I can't tell you till you get to Little Rock so I go cool whatever so I get to Little Rock and he picks me up and we start driving and I, I, all of a sudden I started realizing we're passing the exit of where we were, I thought we were going. And he goes, Hey, Larry he goes, I'm hijacking you because here's the deal. We're going to drive to Austin, Texas. And you're going to listen to me as I convinced you why you need to write a book. True story. I, I talk about it in the book and I go, you're kidding me why couldn't you have just told me this in Houston and I could have rerouted to Austin? He goes, no, cause we're going to have some drive time. And for eight hours, Daryl convinced me to write a book. Cool. He goes, he goes, you have so much inside your head. He goes, you got to take that out and share it with people. Mm -hmm. And he goes, and, and here's what was interesting. He goes, why don't you write a book about street smart social selling? Right. Cause that's what you did inside the office technology world. I said, no, dude, I just can't do it. I, I refuse to write a book on that because I, I, it, it, no one's going to read it, right? 
and and even if they do, they may not make it through the whole book because I've read a few books on social selling and I haven't, you know, no disrespect to anybody. I just haven't, they just, they didn't resonate with me. Right. So he goes, okay. He goes, well, what do you want to call the book? I said, we already have selling from the heart. This is continue to build the brand. And that's yeah. what I did. Wrote, a, you know, I'll just say, hey, this is selling from the heart. And then I just added how your authentic self sells you. And literally within two tries to cover the book was done. I go for great done. I mean, in a nutshell, that's really how the whole book was started it was just based on the podcast and based on Daryl hijacking me and convincing me why I need to write a book. Okay, great. So before we go on, where do people, where can our, our viewers and listeners find your podcast? Uh, you, you can find it on all the podcast apps. Okay. Right? And it's selling the that. selling from the heart podcast. Yeah. And if you go to selling from the heart.net, I yeah. mean, you can find our blogs and you can find links to the podcast. Great. Okay. Now you just touched on something about, um, you know, being the authentic you and section one in the book, I hope everyone can see that is finding your authentic you. Okay. Just, Expand on that a little bit for us, Larry. What does that have to do with selling? Uh, well, I think it has everything to do with selling, but, but here's where I'm concerned with, and I'm going to answer this in a couple different ways, if, sure. if, if you allow me to, is I, I think today too many people are tossing around the words being authentic, being real. You know, I'm here to provide you value. It, 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 to me, they've just become words that people use now. Right. And they, and they don't internalize them. And when I say, you know, become your authentic you, I think everybody has the power to do it. Mm -hmm. And it all starts up here. It's right. a, I think it's, it's a mindset thing. And, and, and what, what's, what's really interesting is I have, you know, full disclosure, I have no doctorate in human psychology, nothing in human behavior and all that. I, yeah. I said, you know what, this is just trial and error. And, and I earned a PhD and getting the snot kicked out of me. So I'm caught <laughs> my whole life in LA. But what I started to find out was it's hard to manage multiple personas. And here's where I'm going with this is let's just take a look at our personal lives. Hopefully, you know, regardless if you're married or not, or if you're in a significant relationship, you always, you know, you're bringing the best version of yourself to your relationship. At least I hope you are. So then my challenge is, and where I really started to think about this is if you could be real and genuine and sincere in your personal life, then that can transfer over to your work life. Okay. And if, and if you, and if you can, and I'm just keeping this simple, but that, that's where I started keying in on this is if we can work on our personal relationships, just as much as we work on our business relationships and we marry those two together. Yeah. Great things happen. So that's why I said, you know, you all can become your authentic you. It, it's going to take a little bit of work, Yeah. but I, but I found it because I was harder on myself and I always, you know, I always craved feedback and I always craved, you know, Hey, what do you think of me? And things like that, that worked for me, that drove me and it doesn't work for everybody. Right. But I just said, hey, you know what? If I can't bring the real version of myself to my clients, then I'm living a sales lie and it's going to get exposed sooner or later. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And it, I noticed uh, when I was reading through the book, you talked about um, being, when it comes to and basically being your, your authentic self, the need for uh, self-awareness how important that is yeah and you know it, and it's interesting and that's why i wrote you know mike that's why i wrote the first half of the book the way i did it was just uncovering who you really are mm -hmm. and and i think you know and and i've been in you know some really great sales teams and i've been on some subpar sales teams and one of the things that that i became aware of real quick is we're not doing enough with our sales people to help them become the best versions of themselves yeah. So what, do, you know, what do I mean by that is, you know, companies and I'm going to, I'll keep it generic for this is, you know, companies out there, I'm sure provide great product training. They provide great, you know, storytelling around the company, around, you know, their services and their support, how to market the company and all that. But we don't do enough to work on how our salespeople position themselves, right? 
how, how they do things. We're, we're not coaching and nurturing our salespeople and helping them out find the best versions of themselves because, and I write about it in the book is I talk about sales chaos. Right. I mean, sales is difficult and let's just get that one out on the table. I don't care what line of work you're in. Sales is brutally tough. You got to have thick skin for it. But in order to do that, you got to work on yourself. Mm -hmm. And we, as, as leaders out there, managers, who, however you want to classify yourself <laughs> in management, is we're not doing enough to help our salespeople work on themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And, so it, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it start and it starts with taking a look. And that's why I said, you know, and, and I, I self-reflect every single day and I work on myself every yeah. single day. We have to. Well, and here's what I find too. Interesting about that. We're not helping. We're not help. Well, organizations in general aren't doing enough to help people find their, uh, their authentic self. And that comes back to coaching for sure. Um, because here's the thing. You're always going to have that top, maybe it might be as much as 10%. It's usually less five, one to 5% of your sales reps don't necessarily, I think everyone needs coaching, but the, the top one to 5% probably need less of it than your, than your core. Right. Yeah. But okay. So I, I'm, I'm going to challenge what you, I'm just going to challenge what you just said. And, and, okay. and, and here's Good. what, um, I, I'm going to throw professional athletes in this for a second. Right. Yeah, I mean, you can tell looking over my shoulder, I'm a baseball guy, you're a hockey guy, but you, I mean, you're, we're going to, you're going to get this. I know where you're going with this. So, <laughs> why, so why do we say the top one to 5% may not need it? When you look at LeBron, let's just look at LeBron James, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's got a coach, right? Yeah. Probably multiple coaches. Let's look at Tiger Woods. He's got multiple coaches, right? Let's yeah. look at Tom Brady. He's got multiple coaches. Mm -hmm. And these are elite performing athletes. And so my challenge to the sales world, is, it, it, and, and that's, my, that's my biggest challenge. So um, I, had a, I had a gentleman by the name of Dana Cavalier on our podcast, the Selling from the Heart podcast. And Dana I'm sorry, was, David who? Dana. Dana Cavalier. Okay, so, Dana, Dana, so yeah, so Dana was the strength and performance coach for the New York Yankees from 2001 to 2014. He wrote a great book called Habits of the Champion. Okay, I highly suggest you that that the listeners read it. But in that, it's really interesting. When I started to get to know Dana, and we started peeling this thing back, because I'm just a sports nerd, and I, yeah. I mean, I I could listen to sports stories all day long. And and he was sharing with me, you know, all these elite athletes. They plan, they practice, they prepare, they have coaches. And they do it because they want to be at their best level every right. single day. Okay. And that's where I'm going with, you know, with this whole sales thing is we can't categorize, okay, well, we got A salespeople, B salespeople, and C salespeople. I, I understand that. Yeah. But coaching, that's the thing that I think sorely missing in the sales world. Oh, is, I agree with you on that. Is, is yeah. We don't, we don't, I mean, I was, you know, I was, I was so hard on myself because I always wanted to sit at the top of the totem pole, never at the bottom of the totem pole. Right. And so I continually just pushed myself and I sought coaching and I invested in myself and things like that. So, you know, I always say, Hey, a C player can become a B player. B player can become an A player and an A player can become an A plus player. Right. It starts with up here. Yeah. Yeah. Where I was going and I totally agree with you on that. And thanks for, for challenging me, challenging me on that. Um, I think what I was getting at was that usually your top salespeople are extremely self-driven, right? Um, and they might be the type of people that can sit down like you do and self-evaluate and be hard on themselves. So I'm not saying they don't need coaching. They do. Uh, what I'm getting at is I think for a lot of the, a, a lot of the, majority of, of people don't do that enough. They don't self-evaluate. They don't sit down and reflect every day. And that's where, for sure, coaching can definitely play a huge role in helping these people to get into the habit of doing that, right? Okay, so why do you think that happens? Why, why do, do you I think, think people do it? I'm sorry, why do I think what happens? Why don't you think enough people sit down and work on themselves? Oh, I think, I think that one of the reasons, well, I think there's a few reasons. I think one reason is people are afraid to do it. They're afraid to be well, honest with themselves. That's one reason I think. 
the apps absolutely they're afraid of what they're going to find out and yeah. i always say you know what you guys i mean if you want to improve you got to eat vulnerability for breakfast yeah. lunch and i think time. another another reason is like people are and even in some people are just going through the motions like people are like they're i don't know like i think people are just in a a, a mental place a, a mindset where they're just kind of going through the motions they're not stopping taking time and there's a lot of reasons for that there's tons of distractions people are feeling overwhelmed super busy they're distracted by their by their their phones and so on and i don't think enough people take time to sit down whether it's in the morning in the evening or a couple times a day and just be quiet and reflect and think about what they can do to improve themselves and yeah you know no, it's spot on, and it's and it's really interesting. And here's where I'm going to challenge the sales world on this thing: is you didn't get into sales to become mediocre. Yeah, right. And athletes don't decide, regardless of what sport they choose, they don't decide. Hey, one day I'm going to be, you know, I, I want to be a baseball player. I want to be a basketball player, and I just want to be an average. No, right. Wanted to be an elite athlete so and, and I, I wrote about it you know i wrote about it in a blog that i released this morning is there are so many and i mean so many and if and you know for people who listen want to throw darts at me that's okay is there's so many mediocre and subpar sales people out there i just want to puke yeah. and and it's you know and the sales profession's done it to ourselves right the managers have helped right leadership is you know, lack of leadership is, is one thing, but I'm telling you, if you want to improve and, and I talk about in selling from the heart is there's a lot of a players who are masking around or, you know, masquerading around as a players who they think they are, but in all actuality, they're nothing but B or C players. Right. Tony, you, I was reading in your book uh, last night about, um, you gave examples of like the, seasoned long-term sales per people in a company who are not really selling. They're just maintaining relationships with or managing customers. And if they lost one of their key accounts, what would they do? Like for, you talked about prospecting. There, there are just tons of so-called successful salespeople in organizations who do none of it. They don't, they don't do prospecting. They don't want to do prospecting. They haven't done it for years. Some of them have even had stuff, you know, basically accounts handed to them on a silver platter. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I just say there, you know, there's a bunch of overpaid babysitters out yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 it's, and it's so interesting. And um, <laughs> when, when you start talking to these people, I said, you know, you're one client loss away from having your sales world rock you just don't know it yeah and, and, and what, what's interesting is, and this is what i want the seasoned tenured sales people to really you know listen to is you know hey I, you know i've been there done that right i get it but one of the things i always put on the forefront is this is i never took my clients for granted i never took the relationships for granted and i always built meaningful incredible relationships inside those accounts but i learned how to drive conversations and here's one of the things that i think tenured salespeople struggle with who especially manage a book of business and that's all they do is right. they just manage that they're not nurturing and growing any of the relationships there's a certain level of conversation you have with your current clients that's different when you're prospecting for new business and what's happened is these tenured sales reps are used to having safe and comfortable conversations with people who know them. Right. And then when they're thrown in the position to open up new conversations with people who don't know them, they struggle with it because they're out of practice. Yeah. Simple as that. I mean, yeah. it's not, it's not freaking rocket science. You know, that reminds me, you used a sports analogy and you like baseball. So the best hitters in baseball, never stop doing batting practice do they no and you know what, what was interesting i was watching the i was watching the dodger game last night and the commentators on there threw a stat out and i found this absolutely freaking fascinating they said if you collectively take all the batting averages mm -hmm. of every single major league baseball player out there right now the collective batting average is 245 
think about that one. Let's just use 250, right? Mm -hmm. 75% of the time, they're not getting a hit. Right. They're, they're batting 250. Think about that one for a second, but they still got a plan. They still got to prepare. They still got to practice. They still got to have all these daily routines yeah. that are held accountable to do. Yeah. Good point. So Larry, um, one other thing I was going to say when you asked me, why do I think so many people don't take time to self-reflect? And so I touched on, you know, people are just, a lot of people are just going through the motions. A lot of people are afraid. And I think the other thing is if they're leaders, if the leaders in these sales organizations and in these companies aren't taking the lead in doing that type of thing with their people, helping their people. So that's not just a frontline sales manager or the second line sales manager. It starts at the very, very top of an organization with the CEO and the, you know, the whole leadership team within any company. They've got to also take the lead in doing that and showing people that they do that, how they do that, why they do that, and the benefits of doing that that would make a huge impact on the rest of their organization, wouldn't it? Yeah, you know, and, and I, 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 I touch on it in Selling from the Heart, you know, and um, unfortunately I see a lot of this, as I call it Isolation Island, is, you know, yeah. you're, all, you're all housed in the same company, right? The same right. building, for that matter. Or, you know, obviously if the larger the companies, it, it, it tends to be a little bit difficult, but I think everyone's going to get the point behind this is you got management who sits over here, right? Yeah. Executive management sits here, they're huddled, right? They do their thing. You got middle management over here, they do their thing. And you got the sales team over here and no one's congruent. No one's talking. There's, there's no alignment. Right. You know, executive management, you know, will come up with the vision, right? And, and the goals and, and things like that. But how well are they trickling it down to management? And how well is management trickling it down to the sales team, right? right. And how are they collectively all working together? Yeah. Unfortunately, it's more often than not, they don't. It's because they, you know, they get, they get stuck in the here and now. They want instant results. Nobody wants to work on things, right? Yeah, and people, you know, at least in my opinion, we keep bouncing back to sports analogies, but it, they, I mean, they can they can reign true. Is you know, you have teams that that will go through rebuilding years and rebuilding years because they know that in order to do, you know, in order to rebuild, you got to take a step back. Right. Not too many sales organizations that I've seen are willing to take that step back and rebuild. Point. Yeah, that's a policy. They, 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 they just don't I go, you know what, you, you didn't, you didn't get to where you're at overnight and you can't fix it overnight. And, no, and you're it, right. But we live in a society where everything is short term thinking. Oh, well, because salespeople want instant gratification. Yeah. Right? Well, and, and companies do too. Like companies, no. right? <laughs> no, you know, you know, ab absolutely. And, and, and that's why, you know, it, it's, it's interesting. And that, that's why, um, you know, I'm about as, and I'll admit, I'm about as old school as old school gets, but I've modernized it. I've changed along the way. I've adapted to what's around me. And, you know, and, th and that's my biggest challenge to the sales world is, and that's why I didn't write a book. And in, like I said, in the very beginning that, ha that had to do with, you know, modern selling or social selling or anything like that. Right. I, I, I'm not anti because I leveraged the heck out of it. But there's just not enough organizations helping salespeople become the best versions of themselves, helping them really unpack who they are and then tie all the tools around it. Right. And so, you know, I, I look at it this way as, you know, if, if we look at all the tools that are available to the sales teams in 2019, they're a lot greater than they were five years ago and 10 years ago. And it yes. I started selling. And tools are great. but what I always say is we have to work on ourselves. We have to bring the best version of ourselves, not only to our company, but to our clients, to our prospects and all that. Yeah. Because it may, maybe this is just me and the sickness I have, and this is how my brain works, but tools are great. But if we don't change our mindset and if we don't work on ourselves, then what? 
and I, and I, and I've seen this unpack and I've seen this unfold in sales teams, you know, that I work with or people who reach out to me is they go, you know what? It, it, it's hard to do all this stuff if I live a life of chaos. Right. And in sales, we do live a life of chaos because we either control it or we allow it not to control us. It, 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 it's simple as that. Yeah. But you know, that's where it's not old school versus new school. It's not modern versus traditional. You know, let's just stop all of this stuff. It's just, you know, how do we learn to adapt and thrive in the world that we live in today? You talked in the book, uh, and I believe, I want to say it was in that section on chaos and how to overcome that about, you know, getting up and having a routine every day. You exercise every day. You read every day for at least 15 minutes. Uh, you do self-reflection, right? Yeah. That's all part of how you actually get rid of the chaos. You have got to structure your life. And I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, but you do. You have to have a structure to what you have to have daily routines and habits to help you become a better version of yourself, the best version of yourself that you possibly can be. And if you're just, yeah, am I right? You know, no, no, no. I mean, that's it. I mean, that's just a given. How do you, how do you expect in the sales world? How do you expect to have consistent levels of success if you don't practice, prepare and plan? Yeah. I mean, you're fooling yourself, right? And that's what I'm saying you know, mirror never lies. Right. And, 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 and there's so, you know, and there's so much stuff out there on social now, you know, and that's why sales reps are looking for instant gratification. Right. You know, they're looking for the silver lining. They chase the shiny objects, you know, the shiny yeah. object you, you should be chasing yourself. Yeah. It's one of the reasons like some of the videos I, I do and they're short, but like the one I did yesterday and, and today for that matter, I did in my the one I did this morning was in the, the gym here where I live. And I do that on purpose because one of the things that I want people in the sales industry to realize too, is that taking, <laughs> taking care of your physical self takes care of this because when you do something, you, you, you exercise, you do some physical exertion, it has a huge impact on your mindset, your emotions, and it prepares yeah. you for the day ahead. And that's really important. And I mean, Hey, I'll be the first to admit, I don't get in the gym every single day, but I'm in there every week, several times. And it's, you know, that's just one part of managing your day. You've got to learn to manage your day, manage your life. And that's going to help. But like you said too, it's a, it's a long-term thing. You're not going to become, uh, you know, a superstar sales professional until you become a superstar human being until you become the best version of you. And you talked earlier about even with personal relationships, how are you doing in your personal relationships? And when you can succeed with your personal relationships, you can take those same principles that you did to do that and merge it with your, your work, your business. Right. And it also, that gives your, your work real meaning and purpose. Right. You know, and, and, and that's why, uh, you know, I always say, you know, relationships do matter. Right. You know, I agree with you on that. I know there are people that disagree with that. Like they say, oh, that's, you know, and that, and that's okay. And that's fine. I, I mean, yeah, yeah. Every, I, I mean, it makes for great conversation if you can healthy, yeah. you know, yeah. disagree in, in, in a, in a, in a fashion that drives healthy conversation. Sure. And, and, and it's, and it's interesting because, you know, that, that's just, that's just look at social for a second. There's too many people on social that just agree with it things everybody says no one's there's too, there's too many people out there that are afraid to rock the boat and i said you know what it's okay not everyone's going to agree with me and not everyone's going to agree with you and that's okay of course it is yeah but that's just that's just disagree in a way that that keeps it healthy that keeps it conversational that doesn't say you know i'm better than you or this is what you right need to do you can disagree it. without being disagreeable yes and, and you know that, that, that's one of the things I said, Hey, listen, right. We all can't agree, but one thing that we can agree on is we can all get better. Yeah. No matter who you are and we can all build better, more credible and meaningful relationships with our clients. Yeah, we can. And I know we can. And, you know, I, I think there's, so, there's too many salespeople out there 
that live in this wacky delusional world that all their clients absolutely love them. Right. When they've done absolutely very little to enhance and nurture the relationship. Yeah. And, and they go, well, I provide you great customer service. Well, great customer service is a defensive mode, right? Yeah. Yeah. Get on the offense and be proactive. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. I, I mean, there's too many salespeople that are reactive and there's not enough salespeople that are proactive. Yeah. Great. And you know what, Larry? I think that's just for time's sake, that's a great place to leave this conversation because we could go on for hours and hours. Oh. Be proactive, not reactive. I just leave leave everybody with like just you know, one nugget. Do you have a favorite quote you'd like to share with us or one nugget of wisdom that you've benefited from that all of us can think about and reflect on and use? Uh, I, I'm going I'm to throw it around this and, and, it, and it's one of my favorite, I use these in my videos that I do and, and it's just really simple is if you can take and smash together sincerity, if you can add in substance and if you can bring your heart to what you do. Yeah great things happen. Okay. And there's not enough of that. And I always say, you know, the, the favorite chapter in my books, chapter 10, it talks about being an empty suit. Right. And there's a lot of empty suits out there. And I said, Hey, you know what, if, if, you know, if you can just fill your day with sincerity, substance, and bring your heart to your job, yeah. great things will happen. Trust me. I know they will. Okay. That's fantastic. Larry, thank you so much uh, for everybody watching and listening. Remember, get the book, Selling from the Heart by Larry Levine. Um, great book. I have it. You should have it too because you can never, you can, one, well, I mean, listen, we can never do too much reading, right? I mean, uh, so this is, a, this is a, a, a great opportunity to learn from someone who has, years of experience and has as i think you said larry you uh what was the expression you used at the beginning you uh i i, I got a i got a phd and that's and it not, i got a phd not kicked out of not kicked out of me so okay i like that okay <laughs> maybe that should be your next book <laughs> how to get the snot kicked out of you and survive <laughs> larry thank you so no, you're much for this it, and taking some time out of your Sunday to do this. I really appreciate it. And I know that everyone watching and listening to this will too. Have a great day. No, no, it's, it, this was long overdue. So thanks, Mike. You're welcome.